everybody, it's Thursday and this week on The Why Rebels we're talking about how we landed our agent. Like most authors, I have a deep dark secret. There is a trunk novel in my closet. We do not speak very often of the trunk novel, but it is there, it will always be there. And it was my first foray into the world of querying. I did get some requests, mostly because I wrote a decent query letter. The novel, however, was not so much. I really didn't have a good feeling for pacing or plot. <laughs> After sending out about 50 queries, I, I realized that it wasn't the novel that I wanted to be known for and it really wasn't what I wanted to write. So I started my young adult novel. I used querytracker.net to track my submissions. If you guys haven't checked that out yet, I would definitely highly recommend it. I sent out my first query on January 6th of 2009. I was feeling pretty good because I had gotten a couple of requests. And then February 4th, I received an email from an agent that she wanted to schedule a chat. Of course, I had an inkling of what that meant, but I didn't want to read into it and didn't want to get too excited. That phone call turned into an offer of representation. I did have other agents who were considering the material and I did want to give them a chance to respond. When agents request, they're investing time in you, so it is very important and a professional courtesy to let them know when you get an offer so that they can make the decision to either read and respond with either another offer or a rejection if you're not a good fit or they can bow out. Um, I had five agents that considered the full, one who did choose to bow out. I had one agent who offered and after a phone conversation, we just realized we really weren't a good match in the business sense of things and that was fine. We kind of parted ways. Um, she was awesome, but it just wasn't a good match. An agent should never push you to make a decision to sign with them. Nothing is that time sensitive. This is your career and a good agent will never, never push you to make a decision. You should keep it fairly short. I wouldn't see going over two weeks. Considering and deciding on an agent out of the other three was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And I don't mean to sound cliche and I know I know it's something you hope for and I mean, I'm guilty of it too. Everyone says, oh, I'd kill to be in that position, but it's very different when you're there. You don't, I think it was Gretchen who said, you don't want to hurt feelings. And when you have someone who's so excited about your work and so few people have seen it, it's hard to tell people no. All the agents I talked to, I had great conversations with. Um, we talked shop, we talked life. We talked cage matches, <laughs> long story. But when it came down to it, I had an inkling of who I wanted to go with. I still took a few days to think it over and in the end, I did decide to go with Ro. You can look at stats until you go insane. I did it, everybody does it, but your story is gonna be different. Some people send out 200 query letters and don't get an offer. Some people get an offer on their first query and some people get an offer on their 194th. You have to find that person who's in love with your work, who understands you and who's gonna be a good fit to work with you. Because this is someone that you're going to be trusting with your career. And trust is really important in an author-agent relationship. So good luck out there, guys. Hopefully you get some requests off your queries and best of luck. Don't you love it how we all say query different?